Jesus Freak here, and for once, I'm not necessarily getting into my own opinions on this, since I don't necessarily agree with them, but I don't know how well you can see that back in the background, but those are the those symbols represent the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Well, traditionally, the Gospels were said, there's no question about this, it's been negotiable, the namesakes of the Bible, uh, books are their authors. Now, I don't think it really matters whether you actually believe the exact, you know, what's been taught about that in church circles. And I think even in most of our circles. These aren't necessarily 100% understood. But I'll try to explain this the best I can. Now, Matthew is a ascribed to the person called Matthew in Matthew 9.9, 9, who's called Levi the son of Alphaeus in Mark 2.14 and Luke 5.27-28, which are the parallel passages. According to tradition, he wrote his gospel before 50 A.D., so between 10 and 15 years removed from the events in either Hebrew or Aramaic and it was later translated into Greek. Some people take the Shem Tov manuscripts as evidence of this Hebrew version of Matthew. They, they're a Hebrew version of Matthew, whether they're the Hebrew version That's, that'd have to be determined. Now, Mark is a, associated with John Mark, who is mentioned in Acts 12.12, 12, 12.25, 12, and 15.37. Paul mentions in Colossians 4.10 and Philemon 24, and Peter mentions in 1 Peter 5.13. He was a associate of both Peter and Paul. He was a relative of Barnabas, which apparently skewed Barnabas, uh, Barnabas' opinion of him, leading to a bitter dispute between him and Paul. Um, he wrote it in Greek in Rome around 60 AD at the request of the Christians there, based on Peter's recollections. Now, linguistically, there's actually not any valid reason to discount that it was based on Peter's recollections. It's written like someone was basically writing down what he heard from Peter. So it's perfectly possible. Now, Luke is attributed to the beloved physician of uh, Colossians 4.14, who's mentioned also in 2 Timothy 4.11 and Philemon 24, and in the Colophon of 2 Corinthians. He was from Antioch. He was not a Jew, though some people might think he probably he could have been. 
Uh, most accounts say he was not a Jew, but he was an associate of Paul and has been proposed as a co-author with Paul of Hebrews, which I believe is entirely plausible, as I also accept that Paul absolutely did write Hebrews, but he did have co-authors on some of his other epistles. It's uh, Sosthenes, he's Timothy, uh, Silas are mentioned. Having Luke as a po uh, possible co-author of Hebrews is not out of the question. And he's said to have written about 30 years after the events, 63 AD. Now, I think it's plausible, and I'm not the only person to propose this. Theophilus is probably not a literal name, but he, uh, he addresses Luke and Acts both to a Theophilus. The word means lover of God, and I think it may have been intended to be a description, not a name. Now, John is attributed to John the son of Zebedee, referred to in Matthew 4.21, 10.2, and 27.56. Zebedee is actually mentioned in passing. The sons of Zebedee are mentioned in John 21, too, although 21 is kind of an epilogue and could potentially have a different but closely related author, as the style does jump a little bit. And generally, the author of John has been um, completely anonymous, as he doesn't use any name for himself other than the beloved disciple in John any name at all in 1st John and only calls himself the Elder in 2nd and 3rd John and linguistically all of these are connected to each other even if they're not necessarily connected to every other one in this group. John and 1st John are very linguistically connected 1st John and 2nd John are connected 2nd John and 3rd John are connected Traditionally, this has been held to be the same as John of Patmos, who wrote Revelation. I am less convinced of this, but that's what's been accepted for almost 2,000 years now. He's said to have written it in his old age at the request of the elders of the Church of Ephesus, looking back on it from 50 years removed, which explains its differences from the other Gospels. Now, whether you take that or not, I don't really think it matters. Obviously, you know, however the Gospels came to be written, God put his stamp of approval, you know, oh, all scriptures inspired by God, and we have what we have. But that's just what's been accepted for thousands, well, since probably about the second or third century, this has been what most most of us have understood. I just thought I'd, I'd mention it. Jesus freak out.